Good afternoon, Gary. I'd like to start with uh, by saying thanks for inviting me to the game. And I'm talking about cooperative gaming theory. Where two players partake in a game for mutual satisfaction, uh, regardless one will win, one will lose, doesn't matter. Um, and our game is grand unification theory, um, which I'm calling uh, gravitational electrical magnetic theory. I've broken it down to those three simplest components. Um, I think you'll find me to be a worthy adversary and uh, I hope that uh, we both can gain um, a more advanced knowledge on the subject. I'm particularly good in uh, one area and I'm a bit rusty in others and I've got to adapt to your uh, line of thinking. See how we go. We've got to consider forces, trajectories, velocities, energy uh, levels and I call it energy because uh, in particular I, I, I like to use pressure, I like to use the word pressure for a for different things, you know, like uh, electrical pressure, or um, you could say magnetic pressure, and um, air pressure, uh, gravitational pressure, and uh, yeah, I can really understand your frustration dealing with uh, some of these people, and uh, you know, I understand that uh, you might have misunderstood some of my earlier comments you know it's a bit hard to communicate with somebody via a few words you know if I say if I say a couple of words uh, there's not enough meaning conveyed in those couple of words for you to properly understand what I'm saying and uh, by now I'm, I'm pretty sure you've picked up on where we disagreed over the neutron uh, it was some it's a minor technicality and um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, the game begins. It's going to be a great game. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I certainly will. Um, and for anybody else, look, this is between uh, Draft Science and myself. This is our private game. I'm, you know, Gary can ask for help or I can ask for help. doesn't matter. Um, we can have our dial-a-friend um, options. Or uh, we can say, Google it. Uh, yeah, um, it, I think it's going to be a very long and very interesting game. But uh, your theory to me does have uh, some merit. And to get that out of me is, uh, that's like getting blood out of a stone. Um, you know, normally I just would rubbish anybody. Uh, now let's uh, talk about these people that uh, are always referenced. Uh, Einstein, he was just a man, he was a very clever man, uh, but as we all know he made a few mistakes and I don't crucify him for that, I, I, I thank him for his photoelectric effect. Whether he introduced it or discovered it, uh, he was the one that uh, he got the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, Nobel Physics Prize for it, and um, yeah, that's a good thing. And uh, E equals M C squared. Well, any physicist worth their salt uh, knows that's not the full theory. There's a slightly extended theory where you add gamma in, and uh, there's an, a, a much longer theory that's um, for moving bodies uh, and that's the more correct theory but as it stands the good thing about E equals MC squared is uh, yeah uh, well, it introduced physics to the general public because people suddenly they could say whoa it's just E equals MC squared whether they re understood that equation or not uh, you know a six-year-old kid can repeat that it got it out there it made physics popular and we talk about 
Nikola Tesla. He was a very clever man. He was very well educated. Uh, went to different polytechnics. Uh, I read all about it years ago. I was very impressed with his work. Uh, not only did he uh, come up with the three-phase system and the three-phase motor, uh, which most of, uh, well, the world's power system is designed around, but then obviously, uh, like uh, uh, Ken Wheeler says, uh, you know, this Charles Proteus Steinmetz, uh, there's another hero uh, in the game. And uh, I read his book and found two mistakes straight up. And <laughs> he was clever and for his time he was very good. Uh, you know, you're talking over a hundred years ago and, and the man came up with s some solutions. Um, uh, we'll talk about uh, Oliver Heaviside very clever individual, uh, very much like myself. Um, he was trained so far and, and taught himself the rest of the way, uh, shunned by most of the uh, elite because he wasn't, you know, he was from the wrong side of the tracks. Very clever man. Uh, he started, um, well, yeah, he started the work on our uh, transmission line theory and that's quite complicated. Look, a lot of people won't understand uh, the electrical side of this. Um, you know, it takes a lot of years to get your head around it. Um, people say, oh, that's rubbish, I can, I can do this in no time, and uh, you can't. You just can't. You, you have to really get your head around it, and some of it is uh, non-intuitive. Some of it you have to learn, some of, you, some of it you have to learn several times before it actually will stick. And uh, yeah, Oliver Heaviside, he's, he's one of my favourites. You know, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, obviously, yeah, he's, they're all good, they're all, they all contributed. And just because some of them make a mistake here and there, uh, it's not a problem, you know, you've got to overlook the mistakes and look at the, the total benefit um, of their contribution, or the total value of their contribution. And benefit is a, is a good word because we all benefit from their work. Um, the thing I have in common with uh, Steinmetz heavy side uh, Tesla uh, is I'm an electrician and so were those those three uh, Einstein I don't think he was an electrician he was a uh, Peyton Clark and yeah another thing I have in common with all four of them is a terrible thing terrible terrible I'm a smoker Whoa, yeah I'm a bloody smoker doesn't matter um, so we're going to have this game, Gary, and the end result, I hope the end result when we say, okay, it's over, is when we solve this uh, gem theory, or the unified field theory. And I think it's, I think it's remarkable that you've put up with uh, a lot of people and, you know, a lot of crap. And really, some of those people you shouldn't be wasting your time on. Um, I listened to one guy there for 25 minutes, you know who he is, because you made a comment on, on his video and then I had to look at his video to see what you were commenting about and he talked for 25 minutes and, and at the end of the video he came down to two numbers, E and Pi. He took 25 minutes to say that pi is the ratio of the diameter to the circumference on a circle. I was gobsmacked. I was, I've lost that 25 minutes. And uh, in this video, I'll talk to you about time so that we're both on the same page. Uh, I agree that time is just a measurement. And it's a measurement of movement over distance that we, uh, we can reference the velocity of light. 
or as you call it, the, the velocity of force. I'll always call it the velocity of light because that's my standard reference. And I just know that magnetic fields, gravity, all force travels at that velocity. So it's just, it's a, a convenient term to have a, a, a commonality so that we understand each other. Uh, I really like your four spits theory. And uh, if you've noticed, I've left out one thing and I'll mention it now. Matter bits, excellent. But then you've got to add magnetic bits. So this gives us a combination that's uh, trinary. I worked it out not using a trinary number, numbering system. And uh, I'll show you here. I think this will be reversed in this thing. That's just a bit of the sheet there. And in that, in that whole list of 27 possibilities, which is three to the third power, there are three forbidden... Oh, that wasn't the one, no. Anyway, that's the list. It looks like that. There's 27 possibilities. You've got G, E and M. And if you work out the 27 combinations of G, E and M in a trinary system, you'll find there are three forbidden, uh, three, well, you've got to call them particles, th three forbidden particles or three forbidden entities in that set. And they are where you've got three E's, three G's or three M's. And they denote the properties of each of the set of subparticles. Now, I hate particleizing the whole universe, I do. You know, I love wave theory, um, but really, when you look at what, what a wave is, a wave is consisted of a, a number of um, particles, whether it's a magnetic or gravitational, you know, yeah, I'm saying gravitational wave, because there is a gravitational constant and when you refer to that LIGO machine we all know that they just picked up variations in that gravitational field it's not a wave it's it's a static field um, much like a, a magnet is a static field but as you say see, here's here's where we come up against some major conundrums the magnetic field might be stationary but the force in the magnetic field is uh, moving at the velocity of light. And I, I did, I'll, I'll see if I can get it up on the computer. It's a very interesting game, Gary. And uh, I'm, like I said, I'm glad you invited me to your game. So this is uh, just for you. Uh, you can comment on this video and, and note my valid points and uh, we'll see how we're gonna go. We're gonna talk about uh, photons, uh, we're going to talk about neutrinos. Now to me, the neutrino is the absolute base unit. Uh, there could be another one. I'll have to look over my uh, set of uh, mathematically generated particles. And just for the purpose of the exercise, we're calling a photon a particle, but it's a massless particle. Uh, we're calling a neutrino a particle, but it's a uh, zero electric field particle and uh, zero magnetic particle. A neutrino does have mass. I hate to say it, and uh, you know a lot of physicists. Oh, you can't say that. Well, yes, I can, and uh, I have the evidence that a neutro neutrino has the tiniest bit of mass. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist. It, it, if it had no electric, magnetic, or gravitational constant, there would be, uh, or property, there would be no neutrino. It wouldn't exist. You've got to have at least one of those uh, properties for any particle to exist. Uh, very interesting subject is our game. So we're calling it the GEM, and that is the Gravitational, Electric and Magnetic Theory. The GEM theory of the 
grand unification field theory, and you call it field theory. Well, I call it gem because I love it. It's it's a, and I actually live near a hotel called the Gem. And uh, so let the games begin. Uh, you set the rules. Uh, you set the properties. Uh, you're demanding. You're demanding that we have certain forces. Um, pity I couldn't introduce a few unicorns, leprechauns, because they would help me make shortcuts. And you know, if anything I wasn't sure of, I could just add a couple of unicorns and, and maybe a, a bit of fairy dust. And the, uh, there's me fudge factor. Uh, I just added two unicorns, and the equation works. Wouldn't that be fun? It's not the way it works. We've got to ditch the unicorns and the fairies, the pixie dust, whatever. We'll stick to uh, pure logic, uh, analysis of observed phenomena, and uh, we will take the results of other experiments, provided they've been peer-reviewed and been... Uh, done by others, repeated, unless they're our own experiments when intro introducing something new. So if you're going to reference an outside experiment, it's got to be uh, something like the double slit experiment where heaps of people have had a go and you know they haven't been able to solve it. Well, I think uh, if we made a few moves on that, Gary, I think we'd be able to solve that between the two of us quite uh, honestly. It's, I can see a number of factors that are uh, going to be in on that. But I, I'm only doing this video so you can see my face. Uh, I'm not hiding. I'm not uh, anonymous. I'm just me. Uh, I'm different to uh, a lot of people out there. I like to think of myself as a, a logical thinker. I might go off on tangents but if I if I realize I'm wrong I'll correct that and uh, reevaluate what I said and say reincorporate uh, new formula or new data and then start again uh, down the down the main path I hate getting uh, I hate getting sort of um, half correct data to work with it's uh, no advantage to anybody and yeah it'll be an interesting game Gary so with that we'll see how we go cheers mate